AT&T stock held up pretty good given the downturn we're in right now, proven to be the strong dividend payer many Americans rely on them for. But after the most recent earnings report, it appears the stock price has finally taken a fall and the future is uncertain. So in this video, I'll briefly go over their quarterly report and cover why the stock went down. I'll go over some red flags to look out for, and I'll do a quick stock valuation to get an idea if it's a buy right now. Let's get into it. My name is Christian, welcome to my channel. My passion is personal finance, and I hope to inspire you to create a path to financial freedom. AT&T CEO John Stanky says they are comfortable with their free cash flow and that the dividend is safe, and they have no plans on cutting it. AT&T CFO says customer demand for our goods and services remain really strong. So AT&T recently released their quarterly report, and there's some good news and some bad. So they beat on analyst expectations on both the top line and the bottom line, which is great. And they actually reported an increase in customer growth, which seems good. But with growth comes the necessity to invest, to support that growth. And a company's ability to do that comes from their free cash flow. And this growth was unexpected. So that's created a cash flow problem. And that scares people because dividends are also paid from free cash flow. But CEO John Stanky said he's not going to pass on that business. If there's increased customer growth, they need to support it. Along with the increase in growth, they mentioned customers are taking a little longer to pay their bills, so it appears some inflationary challenges are also present. The CEO mentioned although customers are taking a couple more days to pay their bills, he doesn't expect them to cancel service, but he did say we are clearly operating in different times and the macroeconomic backdrop is evolving in a dynamic manner. So as a result of all this, they ended up having to reduce their forecasted free cash flow figures for 2022 from $16 billion to $14 billion. And after that news, the sell-off commenced. And given the rate at which the stock declined this past week, regardless of the CEO and CFO reassuring everyone that dividend is okay, it certainly seems that there's some distrust and doubt from shareholders. That was apparent after the sharp 10 plus percent decline. But hey, at least it didn't go down as much as Snapchat. Wow. So what do we need to look out for? What are the red flags? Of course, further reduction of the dividend or even worse, a suspending of the dividend. Also, if we see further guidance reducing free cash flow estimates throughout the end of the year into next year, that's another red flag. And if we see them having to increase and adjust prices or shut down unprofitable stores because people continue making late payments, all of this would of course indicate reality didn't play out the way they suggested it would. And that the company is in bad shape with little hope for that good turnaround in the company many of us were hoping for after reducing the dividend from the Warner Media spinoff. The CFO maintains they have positioned the company to be ready for times like this. So the potential recession could be a great test for AT&T. Another area to keep an eye on is their ability to continue paying down their debt. Their debt level is one of the biggest liabilities and all of these red flags will compromise their debt pay down plan. If we go into a recession, which by the way, many are saying we're already in one. So as a result of the recession, if they end up reducing the dividend or have to adjust prices and shut down stores because inflationary pressure, these would all be indicators of further weakness. This would indicate the company isn't as well positioned as they led us to believe. And at that point, in my opinion, it just really wouldn't be worth putting any more money into. If they can make it through the recession and sustain the dividend and manage the growth with no issues, that's a win. And they need that win. Now I'm going to switch over to Everything Money Software to take a closer look at their debt and do a stock valuation. And by the way, I plan on doing a video on this software and kind of doing a review on Everything Money's stock analysis process soon. So shout out to Everything Money. I think they've got a great product here. Of the eight pillars, if we look at the sixth pillar here, it gives us an idea of their debt level and their ability to pay off debt. This tells us if AT&T was to simply maintain their average free cash flow level for the next five years, they would not be able to generate enough money to pay off all of their debt within five years. And this is one of those key issues they said they would be working on after the Warner Media deal was completed. And their ability to execute on that may now be in question. Now let's move on to the stock valuation. So I'll input my assumptions here in Everything Money's Stock Analyzer tool, factoring a 10-year valuation, requiring a 12.5% rate of return, 
figuring 2% growth on the high end and negative 2% growth on the low end. So from a number standpoint, it does look to be a buy right now with a low side buy price of around $22 and a high side of 29. Again, their debt level and projected decline in free cash flow are the biggest issues to consider here. So the challenge they're faced with is continuing to execute on their plan of revamping the company and paying down debt and maintaining enough free cash flow to fund the dividend sufficiently and cover their increased expenses. But doing that during a recession without making sacrifices like reducing the dividend. And that's important. That's the role AT&T plays from an investing standpoint. People use the dividend income to supplement their retirement. And if it gets to a position where their ability to sustain the dividend is further compromised, it may be time to look elsewhere. On the other hand, as the CFO said, customer demand for AT&T goods and services remains very strong. They seem optimistic and think the company won't have to make any compromises. And if you have faith AT&T is strong enough to make it through a recession, this decline may be a really good opportunity to buy more. Personally, I'm going to hold what I got. I just think they're over-promising and under-delivering, so I'm going to hold and just see how everything plays out through the rest of this downturn and reassess at a later time. That's what I'm doing. I'm interested what your thoughts are on the way ahead for AT&T, so comment down below. Thank you for watching. I hope you got value from this video. If you made it this far, I'd really appreciate you sharing this video. It really helps my channel grow. Thanks again. I'll see you guys in the next one.